Hello, and thank you for downloading Witness from the BBC World Service with me, Martin Venard. And today, I'm taking you back to 1970 and an audacious plan to escape from the Soviet Union by 14 mainly Jewish dissidents, along with two teenage children. It's June the 15th, 1970, and at a small airport just outside Leningrad, ten dissidents and two teenagers have arrived to get on a flight. They've bought up all the tickets for the 12-seater plane and they're pretending to be ordinary passengers. But once on board, they plan to hijack the plane and fly it to Sweden and freedom. We wanted to attack two pilots without weapon to tie up their hands, put them off of the plane, still the plane was on the ground. Eduard Kuznetsov was one of the leaders of the group of dissidents. But before they even reached the plane, their plan collapsed. When we approached the aerodrome field, suddenly appeared several cars. A group of KGB men arrived from Moscow in order to arrest us, and many people ran to our directions. There was a big fighting between two groups of the KGB men. The local KGB men resisted to it because, you know, to arrest such big criminals, it's a great heroism and they will receive some medals for it. Meanwhile, in a forest not far from the airport, Edward's wife, Silva Zalmanson, was waiting with three other dissidents, hoping that once the plane had been hijacked, it would be able to touch down in a clearing and pick them up. We were four people in the, the second group, which has to find the place where the plane had to land. We were very tired, and so we decided to make a fire, and then the, uh, suddenly KGB came to arrest us with dogs. Vasha. Edward and Silva were a newly married young couple, both Jewish. They were well educated, and yet they say they had always felt unwelcome in the USSR. Russia traditionally was anti-Semitic. You felt the discrimination in every sphere of the state life. For example, was it difficult to get a job or to do other yeah, things? Some, yeah, sometimes it was difficult to get a job, to study in the colleges or universities and so on. Everybody understood and felt that you're not desirable element of this state. They felt the only way they could escape the anti-Semitism was by emigrating to Israel. But even that wasn't allowed. They used to say to you, go to your Israel, and at the same time don't get permission to leave, to go to Israel. The situation was uh, not fair because I think we were uh, good citizens. My father was a soldier in the Red Army and uh, he had a medal for bravery and also my uncles. Many Jewish people contribute their talent in every field, but still we were not a desirable element because we were Jewish. The couple had originally been asked by another Jewish activist to take part in the hijack of a much bigger plane. But after that plan fell through, they recruited other participants and teamed up with a former military pilot called Mark Dimschitz, who would fly the small plane. Mark Dimschitz, our pilot, he was the leader of our group and Edward was a natural leader in any situation. Because of their personality, we just trust them and we were following their instructions. But even as they travelled from their home to carry out the hijack, the couple realised that things were not going to plan. When we came to Leningrad, to the train station, we saw that KGB is following us and uh, it was no doubt that we will be arrested. But we couldn't stop and we couldn't go back because we felt that we are on 
our way to Israel. They realised that as a known dissident, Edward must have been under surveillance for some time. But they rationalised to themselves the thought that even if they were arrested, it might make getting to Israel easier. All of us understood the situation and everybody was agreed that it's better to be in prison and after that immigrate to Israel than to wait for many years legal permission for immigration. Because, you know, in that time it was practically absolutely impossible to immigrate legally. Six months after their arrest, the group were put on trial in Leningrad. I was accused in high treason and also anti-Soviet agitation and propaganda. And was it a fair trial? Look, it was a kind of show. They didn't pay attention to the arguments for our defence. It was absolutely clear that the sentence was dictated from the Kremlin. What was your defence, Edward? So my defence was I tried to describe the desperate situation of Jews in the Soviet Union and that the state is guilty that we are forced to do such things we really did. When their sentences were announced, there was shock. As the leaders of the group, Edward and Mark Dimschitz, had been sentenced to death. How did you react when you were given the death sentence? Look, I was reacted rather ironically, you know, that millions of people were killed in the Soviet prisons. So it came my turn. So you were not afraid? I was afraid, but I tried to control my feeling in order not to show that I am afraid. I was crying because uh, it was horrible for me. It was horrible today also to remember this day. I received 10 years, but this moment I was more concerned about Edward and uh, I thought that I see him the last time. There was an international campaign against the sentences with protests and vigils outside Soviet embassies in the USA, in Israel and some Western European countries. As a result, the death sentences were commuted and Silva and Edward were released in prisoner swaps with the US in 1974 and 1979, respectively. The international attention and pressure also led to the Soviet Union changing its emigration rules and in the decade following the hijack plot, some 300,000 Soviet Jews were able to leave the country legally. Your actions, Edward, changed the emigration policy of the Soviet Union. How do you feel about that? Look, it means for me very much because it meant that we did our actions successfully because it was the higher goal of us to change the Soviet immigration practice. Are you proud of what you did, Silva? Yes, I am proud of what I did. And I think that we can be proud that we were part of this struggle for freedom. Silva and Edward now live in Israel, where he is a writer and she is a retired engineer. They were talking to me, Martin Venard, for Witness. For details of our complete range of downloads and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com forward slash podcasts. Podcasts.